Today we have invited a guest with us, Ying Jun. Could you please say hello to our viewers? Hello, I am this breeding farm's staff, Ying Jun, and we know that those camels raised in this farm are a little bit different from those seen in the zoo because those camels are living in nature, living in the wild. In addition to vaccination, there will be another high-tech activity. Let's look at this box. This is Beidou navigation system. It's like a necklace, and we are going to put it on the neck of the camels. Today, there will be a drone taking videos of how these necklaces are worn by the camels. Now let's look at the state quo of the camel. This small camel is following the steps of its mother in the copy desert. And we have a screen here monitoring the state of the camels, and we see a lot of camels getting together. For our herdsmen, when they are grazing, they will have an APP on their mobile phone, and they put in the information of the monitored camels and get a information about the distance to the camels. Our staff members will put on the necklace and when the camels are eating, they will consume a lot of energy and daily they will move for about 30 kilometers distance. So that's quite a big movement. That's why we need to put on the necklace. And that will not uh, influence the daily lifestyle of those camels, for example, drinking water and eating. In addition to positioning, what are the other functionalities of this necklace? From the backstage, we can check the file of the camels, for example, uh, their characteristics, their breeding season, their pregnancy time. We can get all those pieces of information. And also, those are the local herdsmen living around putting the necklace on the camels. Yes, we hire the herdsmen in the surrounding of the county, and uh, they took their part-time job in our farm. Before the live show, we saw that there will be a fence encircling the Gobi Desert when we are keeping those camels. Why? We have a zoning of this desert, and we will put up the fences in every zone. That is good for the grazing. And also since we have to consider the ecological conditions here, this is a Gobi Desert after all. So if we have a zoning system while we are grazing the camels, that's good for the local ecology. Those camels seem to be much taller than the average. What are the varieties of the camels? We have imported five different varieties of camels. For example, we have a Sunni Tay and El Tay camels with uh, the two humps and others. So if I approach the camels, will it be a dangerous behavior? Are those camels vigilant? The camels will spit when they are on alert, and it smells bad. And camels have three stomachs. Now those camels are eating grasses. Are those grasses planted by yourselves? We have about 30,000 mu of grassland. And we collect some local herbs to be planted here. 
and uh, the camels love those grasses and herbs because it is rich in protein. Since you were born in the 1990s, what do you feel about uh, keeping those camels? I like it. Staying here, I'm quite accustomed to the life. It's been three years. And what is the benefit brought by those camels to local herdsmen? Since 2019, we imported those camels and uh, it triggered the economic development in Gemini County. The county was ripped out of poverty since 2019. Now, it contains 1,000 households, and uh, the low-income households will be supported by the camel industry. On average, for the 2,000 households, for the 1,000 households, they will increase their revenue by 2,000 per capita. And I heard the sound of the camels. Why is that? Because our staff members are milking the mother camels. It's quite a dangerous behavior. The camel keeps kicking its rear legs. When the camels are in a bad temper, it's a dangerous behavior, milking it. And what's the use of the two wood panels? That's to protect our staff members, because some camels were the first time being a mother, so they are very vigilant and alert about the milking behavior. They seem to be kicking hard. Yes, indeed. And on average, how many milk can one camel produce each day? It's about two kilograms. And what's the price of each kilogram of camel milk? The acquisition price is 30 RMB per kilogram. After milking the camels, what will be the transportation means and the sales channels of the milk? After milking, the will be stored in a temperature of 0 to 4 Celsius degrees, and they will be transported for deep processing in one yuan group also, in our local market, every kilogram it will be sold at 60 to 80 RMB. In the milking process, there is always a baby camel following the mother. Yes, because as a mammal, only with the babies following the steps of the mother will the mother be milked. They will secrete the milk with the babies around. Is the baby camel coming to us? How old is it? It's born only in the past seven days. And I see a piece of cloth wrapped up at its belly because it's just born. And we have a very extreme weather condition here. For example, big temperature difference in the daytime and nighttime. So it's a difficult time for them in the winter, especially in the night. We are in fear of infection, particularly their belly button. And also, to keep it warm. Does it have a name? Not yet. Our viewers may be choosing a name for you. Yes, we will invite your comments and we will choose one. So let your imagination go wild. It's very cute. When I touch it, the hair is so soft. Yes. Because it's just born. I saw a lot of kept camels outdoors. Why are you keeping them aside? Because there are different functionalities of the camels. We divide them into several groups. And also we have different functions of the zones. This is region for drinking. According to our knowledge, some of the camels' humps stand up and some 
lean down or lean sideways. Why is that? If it's in a good physical condition, the humps will stand up. And sometimes it's because of genetic reasons. For example, they follow the traits of their parents. And the third reason is um, in its survival process, they have uh, bumped into some accidents. That's why the humps fall down. And uh, they were in a bad shape, so the humps cannot stand up anymore. Can we have a closer look at the baby camel? So shall we take it out to bathe in the sunshine? Many of our viewers haven't seen such a small camel before, so let's invite it out. I see one in white. The color actually depends on the father of the baby camel. The father's gene will decide its color. The baby camel is fixating its eyes on us. It's white in color, unlike its mother. And just now, we invite some names for the gray camel. So now it's a white one. Get another name for it. Let your imagination work. The white camel seems to be very shy. Yes, the gray one is bolder because this white camel has also been just born in the last week. Can I touch it? Go ahead. Is it looking for its mother? The mother is not around, so it gets anxiety. We see a lot of big camels in the zoo, but not such a small one. And I have a question. The newly born camels do not have a hump. Yes, that's true. If they have the humps in the belly of their mother, that will limit their growth. And I heard that the camels can withstand thirsty. They can stay there in the desert for a very long time without drinking. Yes, that's true. And we have a, such a water tank for the camels to drink, and it can contain constant temperature. And the daily water intake is about 30 to 40 liters every day. But at the maximum, they can drink about 120 or 140 liters. And then in the next one month, they don't need to drink water. And they can trespass the big and the massive desert. I hear the groaning of the camel. It's looking for its mother. Even though they look big, they are all less than one year old. They are looking for their mother because they're not weaning yet. And uh, what is the life expectancy of the camels? According to the science, they can live up to 41 years old. But according to the local folks, it can live longer. So how do we compare 41 years old to a person? It's about six to seven years old in a human being. How tall is this camel? It's 1.5 meters or 1.6 meters so that's the height of a one-year-old camel. Thank you very much, Inji, for giving us so many introduction of camels. In addition to the milk provided for the local herdsmen to increase their revenue, there is another treasure from the camels. We see Professor Zhen from Xinjiang Husbandry Research Institute. They are testing the hair of the camels. So, Professor Jay, it's nice to meet you. Hello, everyone. When you are testing the hair of the camels, what is your new finding? We have a lot of important findings today. Usually, we have a parameter for the diameter of the camel's hair. But in our survey today, we found that uh, 
Some have about 12 to 13 centimeters length of a hair. And in the deep processing process in the textile industry, the camels here can be sold at a very high price. So I think it's an important finding when we find longer hair of the camels. What about the human's hair? Usually it can grow to 60 to 90. And a 13 centimeter of camel's hair is about one fifth of a human being's hair. So such a finding must be beneficial for the local herdsmen financially. I can give you one example. Let's take the Tibetan antelope as an example. It was the tier one endangered species. It was endangered not because it has poor physical strength to sustain itself. In that it can run very fast. Even a wolf cannot catch it running after. And it has very rich, soft hair on the antelope. And it's irreplaceable in the textile industry. There is huge demand for the antelope's hair. So that's why antelope is gradually endangered species. And for the camels, camel's hair is sold at about 30 to 40 RMB yuan per kilogram. And on the camels, we found a 13 centimeter long of hair that's even thinner than the goat's hair. Because on average, the antelope has a hair of about uh, 10 to 12 centimeter. And the new found camels here can be made into high end products. So it is very promising. How do you test the hair? We are proud of our testing technologies. With the high quality growth of the husbandry industry, scientific uh, innovation is paramount. And there are several features of the testing equipment. It doesn't require constant temperature or constant humidity, because the camels here used to be very sensitive to the humidity and temperature. For one same fiber, different temperature and humidity may lead to different testing results in the past, but right now, it's different. The previous technology was like a fixed telephone. We cannot move it to a pasture for testing, but our equipment is movable and we don't need constant temperature and humidity. So it's like uh, mobile equipment in breeding or keeping. Such equipment is very useful. And secondly, we have several parameters for the testing. Previously, our testing requires us to cut off one section of the hair for testing. So the cutting position is very important. But we can test the whole fiber. When we test the hair, we can get, for example, the thickness, the bending, and uh, the length of hair. By scanning once, all the parameters will be acquired. It's very quick. The third feature of our machine is that we have a lot of portable technologies. For example, when we test the length of the wool, there may be some vibration. And our machine may encounter such a situation. For example, the camels are naughty and they uh, just uh, hit the machine, and it's OK with the vibration. Firstly, we have a lot of uh, innovation to make it uh, user friendly. Previously, only the trained professionals can do the testing or make judgment of the data. But now, the local herdsmen as long as 
they know how to turn it off and turn it on, can handle it. So it's very user friendly. So I learned that the camels here can be sold at about 30 RMB yuan. For the 13 mm length of hair you just tested from the camels today, what will be the price? We can develop a lot of products. For the wool, with the length of 13 centimeter, it can be sold at 1,000 or even 10,000 RMB yuan per kilogram in the market. Based on our testing result, the thickness of the 13 centimeter long of camel here is even thinner than the gold's wool and it contains better contents than the wool. So I believe the price is comparable to at least the wool. After all, the cashmere is already called the gold in the textile industry. So if we can further develop the camels here with a lens of about 13 centimeters, the hair will be very pricey. And Camels here can trigger development of the other relevant industry. The high quality development of husbandry industry matters the most. But of course, according to the national government, the development must be shared by the whole society in the pursuit of high quality. So we need to also consider the benefits of the downstream industry, like textile industry. And we also must benefit the farms producing the raw materials for the industry. So we must also, in return, benefit the other industries' high quality growth. I don't know if you pay attention to my scarf. This is made of the local camels here. It's very soft. and. Could you share with us about the price of this scarf? And also, can you make a judgment? How many camels wool must be used for this scarf? I believe it will use about 100 grams of camels here. For one camel, they can produce 40% of the hair. So maybe they need to produce 300 to 400 grams to make such a scarf. We can turn the raw materials into beautiful products, enriching the life of people and also supporting the economy of the villages. Camels here can be made of made into different products. For example, our beddings and clothing as the stuffings. If as the stuffings, it's less pricey because they must, must touch differently from those very close to our skin. If it's 12 centimeters or 13 centimeters long, it's high quality hair. So it can be made into better products. And this is the first finding of its kind. Yes, that's true. The national government calls upon the mainstay industry development and rejuvenation. And China hosts a lot of uh, treasurable products and raw materials. Previously, we had little knowledge of the camel's wool. We only knew that uh, a lot of the camel's wool m will be used for stuffings. But for those here, with a length of 12 and 13 centimeters, it's heritable. So in the breeding technology, we can do something to carry it on and produce more higher quality hair. For every one camel, they can produce four to six kilograms of the hair. Then that's about one to two hundred RMB yuan of economic value. But for 13 centimeters hair, they can be sold several thousand RMB yuan with just the hair. We are very curious about the machine testing the hair. 
Let's zoom in at this equipment. How is it done? I can see the different uh, test objects, for example, the cashmere. And that's the camels here? Yes. There are also some different uh, impurities. There must be different quality of the camels here in different positions of its body, of course. We will take samples from the different body parts. And in the breeding process, the camel's hair will grow more similar in different body parts and we must guarantee quality control. Our testing machine can get a result within just dozens of seconds, so we test different body parts, and then we segregate them into different categories in order to make higher quality products. Thank you, Professor Zhen, for such a big finding, and thank you for your time. Actually, previously, in the eyes of the herdsmen, those camels were just a transportation means when they are moving. But now, they develop an entire industrial chain based on camels. For example, camel milk. There are camel milk powder uh, and facial masks and soaps made of the camel milk. And right now, Professor Jen led his team to develop uh, the 13 centimeter long of camels here. It will generate a lot of revenue as well. Thank you for your watching.